Welcome back to Alice Customs Project Car TV and today I just wanted to reintroduce you to my 72 Scout 2 and the reason for this is this was my grandfather's Scout he bought it new in 72 I can remember as a kid riding around and going hunting in it and whatever else so this is uh, I'm keeping this one for me but I want to a kind of return it back to the way it looked as my when my grandfather had it which means eventually we're gonna paint it white and put the red pinstripe on it. Um, some things I wanted to update was I wanted a little taller tire on it, a different wheel. So I'm going to be handling this project over the next year or two, maybe more, it just depends on funds really. I'm gonna put some money at it, fix things as I come across them, just enjoy the truck. I've already spent a little money and if, the, if you follow me on Facebook, and if you don't, please do, I know it's an 80s retro look, but uh, that's when I grew up, guys. <laughs> I, was, I was in high school and college in the 80s. Um, anyway, I, I spent a little money. I got myself some tires and uh, wheels, and they, they would fit pretty much on the truck right now, but that's about all they do. They'd fit, and then I would be stuck with uh, a lack of turning radius, which I don't know is really all that bad considering this back one doesn't have any air in the tire anyway. The next thing I want to get is a lift kit for it, which we'll be looking at in the next few weeks. Once I've got new body mounts and some other stuff that, that I already know is deteriorated and needs to be replaced, I've decided as I do that, there's some rust from when we cleaned up the truck. You recall we pointed out some rust in the interior. So as we do that, I'm going to also lift the body up so I can do the body mounts while it's up far enough that I can get in there and work. I'm going to go ahead and do the sheet metal work on the inside and I don't know that I'll get the inside of the truck sprayed right away, but I'm going to get it ready so that I can spray it white and start to clean the truck up towards where I want it. The outside damage, the rust in the fenders and the dents in the back and stuff, those will be here for a while. Um, like I said, this is going to be a, a long-term project that you're going to see over and over and over as we get money gathered and parts gathered to do different projects. That's the reintroduction to the Scout 2. Right now what I have for you is I had an opportunity to swap some seats into it that I think are going to be more comfortable and you're going to see that getting done and getting ready. So again, thanks for watching and hope you enjoy. Today I'm out in the big shop. Um, I've got to get some seat brackets built for some seats I want to put in this Scout and then the seats are going to the upholsterer. So just got to get them knocked out so that when he's picking up some other stuff for a different vehicle, I can send all of it with him at once. So even though it's not really a critical thing for this particular vehicle anytime soon, getting it done now will just make it easier on me as far as uh, getting them out to him and picking them up later, kind of letting him work on the seats at his leisure. We're going to pull the like, six bolts that hold this seat in, set it aside, set the two seats uh, that I want to use in here, and then we'll kind of talk about what I'm doing there. So this was my first test fit of these chairs when I decided I wanted to use them. I measured them and it looked like everything would fit. Now these are out of a 2006 Suburban. The leather's pretty beat up. They're obviously the wrong color because the interior of this truck is supposed to be maroon, which is why I'm trying to get something done before the upholsterer gets here later this week. And I think I've pretty well got it figured out. I can use three of the factory holes and there's actually a fourth factory hole over here that wasn't being used for the current bench seat, but it was probably used for the original bench seat. This truck was originally had the hard top, the full top, and it had a split, uh, like a 60-40 uh, split bench so you could get into the back seat. Um, sometime in the 80s, late 80s, it was converted to a pickup top and they swapped the bench seat over to go with it, which is not movable, which means the only way to get to the back seat is to crawl over. You know, the seat also is, it's velour, so it's 80s velour. Um, so I kind of wanted to switch to buckets. While I 
like the comfort of the seat. I don't want the headrest. I don't want the built-in seat belt because it totally looks wrong for this vehicle. Well, that's not a problem. The upholsterer, we can pull the airbag out. We can pull the headrest out. We can take, we can cut the frame so that it matches on both sides. The, uh, the shoulders match on both sides. And then we can recover it in a maroon and I'll probably go back with like a leather where you sit and then just vinyl everywhere else. And then I can scuff these, clean them up, paint them either black or maroon. The issue right now is the seat is all the way forward. Um, I do have it sitting up about two and a half inches on this corner. This corner is up about a, not quite a full inch. And then the other two sides are actually sitting, the back corner is sitting tight on the floor. This front corner is kind of hovering above the floor, but I think... By the time I make a bracket that will use the factory bolt holes and then adapt to the bolt holes in here, I'll have a good system. Um, it's Right now it's all the way forward. I need it to be able to go back further. And the problem I'm running into is it's the gear, the, all the track and everything underneath there is just wide enough. It's forcing it into the hump. And so if you tried to recline this, it would hit the wall here. Also right now, the door handle hits the, the uh, back of the chair, which if it was leaning back or if it was pushed back a little bit, it wouldn't happen. But those are all things we got to consider when we try and figure out how to make this usable in here. And, you know, the fact is sometimes it looks like a good idea, even with all the modifications you want to make, I think it's going to be a great idea and it won't work. You know, it's just, it's physically too big maybe. So um, I think the next thing to do is probably go ahead and take this chair back out and break it down take the cover off and make sure we can take the seat belt and everything off. i mean it's it's metal we can cut it and weld it whatever we need to do so it's not really a can it's just whether it's going to be worth it um because they're good seats so if they don't work in this project we could always use them in a different project for now i think that's the thing is take this one out break it down and see what we actually have to work with whether it's going to be usable in this truck or not. All right, guys, we're going to start with this chair first. Just take it all apart and so we can see what we can do is about the tracks, because ideally if I could narrow the uh, the running gear, the, the, the electric tracks, if I could narrow those even an inch or two, that would make a lot more room for the chair to kind of go a little bit inboard. Plus, we need to figure out breaking down this back, getting rid of whatever apparatus is there and getting rid of the apparatus for the headrest. So. see that I was struggling to get this bolt out on the bottom here and uh, that was the last one to let me take the whole seat belt apparatus out so I just went out to the other shop and cut the cut the strap that they were using to hold that on I don't know why that bolts boogered up but it is so if we look at this upper foam We've got a shoulder here and it's cut off there so it's lower and I think what basically is I can get my upholstery guy just to, to glue in some foam over the top of this and make it round like this shoulder. And then all I'll have to do to make that work for him is come in here and cut this tube off, you know, lower than the top of this corner here. Maybe, maybe even put a little curve in it when I cut it so that it gives him a little bit of, of shape. We could take these pieces out, which is where the headrest mounts, these plastic parts. I think I'm gonna leave them there so that if I save these, if I wanted to a year or five years from now add headrests, all I'd have to do is find these in the foam and then punch a hole, slide that down in until it clicks, and then the headrest will plug in. So 
think that's just something easy to leave in place for future if I decide to change my mind on what I want. And uh, there, there's so much foam here, there's no real, you're never gonna see them if we don't punch the hole there anyway. So uh, no real reason to take them out. Um, so that leaves the base. This rail and this rail is where the seat bottom mount to. There's not like an excess amount of room on the outside of these two rails where the seat bottom mounts. The only thing we'd be able to do is if I could tuck this further in, and I don't really see how I would achieve that without displacing these and then having to make, you know, a whole new seat pan over here as well, which, you know, we're getting into a lot of work for what was supposed to be an easy way to have a, you know, a nice seat. Okay, so with this part disassembled and a plan for the back, um, next thing is probably just to take this lower piece back out to the scout and kind of retest it. Now I got a little easier place to get a level uh, measurement from across these seat pan rails. And we can just kind of figure out if, if all this is really going to fit as well as I hope. We could make a little bit of modification to this seat bottom, but there's really not a lot of room for changes short of going to like a, a mechanical forward and back instead of the power seats which wouldn't be bad except I have this set of seat rails and I don't have the set of mechanical ones and I'd have to find both a passenger and a driver's side if I want to start trying to change that up but those are easier to modify typically than the power setup um, so I'm going to set this piece aside set this foam and the other parts aside Okay, so what I've done so far is gone out and used the plasma table and cut this pan and I cut a couple of test pieces out of uh, the sheet metal so that I could, you know, I was measuring where all these holes go and everything had to be tweaked just a little bit. You know, you kind of kind of measure, 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 but you don't have any real solid points to measure from other than like a door sill or something. And so getting everything just perfect took uh, Took me two test cuts, and I, like I said, I just cut them out of sheet metal so they didn't cost very much. Then this one is the uh, final product for the passenger side. It is The outside perimeter bolts are for the GMC seat bottom, and then the inside holes line up with the scout floor, and this is the bottom, and this is what would be like for the back seat. I let up the little cut out there, just a little extra leg room. Um, and then I've gone in and welded on some quarter inch risers and these sit to the inside next to the transmission tunnel. And then the larger holes here are so you can get a socket down through there to get to the, uh, the bolt that goes into the scout floor. And we know this is the passenger side and it's the top because I cut that in there. I've been playing with that here recently. The next side is the, the floor of the scout slopes. So I needed a little bit of a riser there just to give some room for everything to sit nice. But this other side needs, um, I went out and set this on the floor, got it snugged up, and then I measured for, through the holes here so that I get where the floor is actually at. I get the measurement. I need one and seven eighths inches. And I'm using some fairly heavy wall tubing here. It's probably uh, 3 sixteenths, might be quarter inch wall. Those are 1 and 7 eighths. And then I cut some, well, two of these will be for the driver's side. Uh, I cut some slugs that will fit down in these. And weld that in there, clean these up. Weld that in there. And that'll be the foot and the bolt can go through there. So that will sit. Like so, and then like so, and that will make the floor of the scout level for the GMC 
uh, seat rails. So the next thing is to uh, flip this back over, clean up that square tubing, weld these feet in, and then uh, weld them to the bottom of the can here. These will get welded on there. And that will be a complete seat base for the, uh, for the passenger side. And then what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is uh, GM used a combination of bolts and studs out of the floor, so I think I'm gonna copy that. The ones that need a stud, I'll weld the bolt head through from the back side, and then the ones that had a bolt, um, I'll weld a nut on the other side, so, or on the back side. So we'll kind of copy what they did, um, because what they're doing is based on the height of the riser on the seat rail, they knew they could get a nut in there, or they knew they'd be able to easily get a bolt in there. So um, let's clean these up and get them welded. Now you can see basically what we've done. Um, the floor will be sloping here, so that's why that wedge is up. You can see nice finished edge there. We can paint this or powder coat it, whatever we decide to do. Um, and then, so this one and this both originally had a stud coming up out of the floor and then a nut dropped down in there. And then these were bolts. So I'll basically mimic that. I'll, weld a stud from the bottom side in through both of those and weld a nut on these two. And I'm probably going to use, uh, I don't know, 7 16 hardware. The, uh, the original Scout floor has uh, 5 16 hardware holding the seats down, so I don't think, see any problem using 7 16 This would have been metric originally, but the idea is you bolt this down and then be able to come back in and drop the seat in on top of it. Um, but with this all lined up and done, except these, this aside, we just need to work the back, rework it a little bit, and then the passenger seat is essentially ready to go to the upholsterer, and we can do the same process for the driver's seat. 
Okay, so these bolts that I'm welding in are uh, grade eight, and they are black, covered in black oxide rather than like cadmium or uh, zinc. I'm gonna finish welding these in, and then we've got two oversized 7 16 nuts to uh, weld in over here and here. Seems to line up real nice. Now I just got to make one for the driver's side, which is going to look just like this, so probably won't film all that. And like I said, make a couple of modifications, modify the back. So we'll get onto that now. All right, so the next thing, I just used this foam, but could have been anything. Just want to trace this curve. I don't care about this part. That's where the airbag sat. Um, and then we're going to cut this out. And then we can use this as a pattern to flip to the other side. So let me get some scissors. With that uh, cut and welded up, um, I don't think the cap was particularly necessary. I was just afraid that as people were getting in and out of the vehicle, if you started pushing down on that corner of the seat, that you'd start pushing the foam down in there and cutting it. And then over time, it would just have a big hole there. So by capping it off, it uh, keeps this shape the same and keeps the foam from getting tore up underneath it. So we can set this aside and then we'll get the back seat out and see if we can figure out uh, the best solution for that. Yeah. 